Okay, Matt Davio uh, back again with Tony. And uh, Tony, you had a question you wanted to ask me uh, specifically, and I figured we'd do a podcast uh, on it uh, before uh, really talking about things. Yeah. So why don't you go ahead and shoot me your question? So my question, I was thinking about this, and um, you know, I've been told stick to your trade strategy and like have an idea of what you're doing when you get into the get into a trade. But I was wondering if like you're ever in your trade, you're sticking to your strategy, and as it develops, um, if you ever mid trade decide, oh, like I need to change my trade. Oh yeah. But then do you deviate from your strategy? Is that like? Is that a no-no or do you, you know, you know what I mean? Like do you? So a lot of people will ask, and I, I think the question is, it's a good question. And they'll ask, Hey, you know, uh, if you're in a trade, do you ever flip? Uh, you know, like yeah. this is kind of another way of asking the similar question. Do you ever go from, uh, you know, long to short <clears throat> or, or, or short to long? Maybe you're being really conservative and you have two contracts Yeah, that was your plan, but now you're like, Oh, I should, Ten, yeah, like sure. yeah, like everything comes together, and uh, you, you, you really you really decide to put on some some serious size. Absolutely, uh, it doesn't happen often though. The way I trade, I tend to I tend to be a limit trader versus a market order trader. So I tend to pick my spots very you know like I know where I want to right. buy or sell whatever it is I'm trading, and and I'll put orders in reflecting that. Now, I can give you a real world example where I was very short for a long time crude oil from, you know, not every day, but from the good chunk of when crude finally broke $90 in the fall of 15, summer of 15, fall of 15, I'm going back and I don't have the chart in front of me, but it was one of those periods of time. When that happened, I was very short for months like you know okay. until it was and i was looking for again that doesn't mean i was short every day but most of the time i was looking for rallies to sell and when those rallies came i would sell and then i'd ride it down to the next level and rinse and repeat and do it over and over again yeah there became a moment and it was i can tell you because i was working with a student who was in working with me in bend from new york city and we had been doing this. He had been working with me for two weeks and we were short, 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 but I kept telling him this is going to change and you may be here when it happens. You may not be, but what's going to happen is we're going to at some point want to get long. And I was looking at $25 as it was the area that I wanted to be long and it never got there. It never got to $25. It got to twenty six fifty or so, yeah. and I started buying a little bit, and uh, st some of my short, and then uh, the market. Uh, all of a sudden, there was a really significant buyer. Like somebody came in and bought like five thousand contracts of, of crude to the to the point where we went from you know twenty six fifty to twenty seven in a heartbeat. I was still short some of my position and I told him, I said, okay, cover and double the other way. And he was like, and, and I said, don't ask me why, we'll talk about it later. So here's the why. What happened in that moment, What ha you know, I was prepared for that, yet I was still writing it short, uh -huh. knowing that this was going to be short lived. I was trying to pinch every, you know, kind of last move out of it. Cause I was probably short from the thirties yeah. at that point. But what happened was in that moment, there, there, was, there was no news, there was nothing, there was no announcement, there was no oil number that had come out. It was just somebody decided it's over. Somebody with size. It's not crazy. So it, it, it can be something as simple as time, and it can be something as simple as uh, volume. You know, volume comes into the market that is yeah. different, again, is different than what the market had, had been doing. And that usually is it's a point of exhaustion and, you, and you're kind of even seeing it right now with the VIX. Like okay. everybody's Very selling, similar. everybody's selling the VIX, right? Yeah. And they've been doing it for a long time because it works. Like the thing doesn't go up. It doesn't spike. What's going to happen is everybody's going to storm the exit doors at the same time. And if you don't get out in the first stampede, you're dead. 
Like those yeah. people will literally, they'll, they'll be carried out on a stretcher, charred, burned. <laughs> no, but this is the thing. It's like they're so, they're so, um, they're so broken into the, they're, they, you know, they're so used to, to doing it the way they've been doing it. They won't even recognize it because they're so, that they, they've built that muscle that, oh, it's just going to come back. It's just going to go even lower. Yep. So at some point that changes and they get caught and they're a one trick pony. Yeah. They're a one trick pony and they'll, they'll be wiped. A lot of people will be wiped out of the business. Think about it. If the VIX goes from it hit an all time low just a couple weeks ago, 884. Previously it was just like, it was like 908. <clears throat> so getting into the eights and I'm not saying it can't go to zero. I guess anything is possible. I always say this. Yeah. Anything is possible in markets. If you think that it's not, you're the fool. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you always, this is the hardest thing about this game and it's a game, but it's no different than if you are, uh, you know, playing Monopoly, right? Yeah. And let's say you just have all the utilities and the railroads and, and I've got everything yeah, else, well, but I've got everything. You've got everything else. You've got Boardwalk, Atlantic City. You've got, you know, everything else. Guess what? I can still win. It's unlikely. But the dice can roll my way. Yep. And you could be pinched on. You could you could basically get a margin call, and you're going to have to sell your properties, yep. right? Yeah. And then I'm going to start swinging back that way. So nothing oh, like hurting. So nothing in markets lasts forever, and you should always tell yourself, "What do I do if?" Like you should always be asking yourself, "What do I do if this happens? How do I behave?" Even if it doesn't happen today. Yeah. That way the muscle is trained like you've been through the fire drill going back to the theater yep. and you know what to do. If you've never, this is why you have fire drills and this is why they're so, they're, they're so weird because like kids just goof around. But the reality is they're, I mean, you don't have time. Well, it's funny you, met, like, you mentioned that because I was reading an article on psychology and they were talking about moments where like natural disasters or time where people have to act in the moment. Yep. And that they, they freeze like a deer in the headlights type of thing. And most people die because during the disaster emergency, yes, they just don't act. It's like counterintuitive to what you think to survive. That's correct. But like during a plane it's run perverse. Or it's fight. It's literally. This is where the you know we have two, two today. Here's a, this is a whole podcast, another podcast we're okay. talking about. But the fight or flight is so powerful in the human beings that it's a negative now in our lives most of the time. We're not gonna die, right? Yeah. We act yeah. like it, <laughs> but we're not gonna die if, you know, we cut our finger on a kitchen knife most likely today. Because we, if it's really deep, we can go get stitched. Yeah. You know, even if we cut it off and we're near a hospital, they can, today they can most likely even sew it back on. Yeah, right? worst case scenario. But in the past, they would have been more like, hey, let it go. You're going to just have that part of the finger. We're going to, we know how to stop the bleeding. Right. Right. And move on. But people today, uh, we're so comfortable. Like we don't have predators in the sense that lions are going to kill us like they did in Africa. They to, still do. Today we'll Instagram it before we go to the hospital. <laughs> today we will Instagram it, Facebook it, and uh, snap it before yep. we go to the hospital and while we're in the hospital. Right. Live stream. Live stream, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and then we'll tell you what we had at the uh, hospital cafeteria. But seriously, th those moments happen. And, and really the best thing I can say to people to suggest how to deal with that is think through the, the ultimate worst case, it can't happen situation every time. Yeah. Most people don't do this. Right. Right. If you're, you know, if, if you're long, life. yeah, if you're long something and, and, um, Overnight risk is such that you're comfortable and you could say, hey, if we're limit down tomorrow in the futures, will that put me out of business? Then you're too long. Because it can be limit down for two days in a row. That's 5%. So if you have 20 contracts, 5% of the spoos right now is 100. That's 100 grand every time. Ouch. Right? So it doesn't take long <laughs> yeah. for that to happen. Yeah. I can okay. See but you have to think through, oh, uh, yeah, can I handle that? Sure. So, because that can happen and it does happen. It hasn't happened. So we haven't, you know, to that point, we haven't had a 2% move in over 10 months in one day. 
we haven't had a 3% move in uh, 17 months. So I just looked up this information yesterday. So, so if one people comes, are being lulled in the 2% move is normal. We used to have those 20 times a year. This, I mean, literally, like we do and in a normal market. In two or three years? We haven't had a 2% move in 10 years. We haven't had a 3% move in a year and a half. Wow. So this is the point. People get lulled to sleep into this will never end, right? Good times, right. bad times. It doesn't matter. And it's the could, same. Somebody could have been trading for a decade and not. Well, Victor Niederhofer, uh, who I've met, he's a friend of mine, a hero of mine. This is what he does. He sells, 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 option. You know, this is what he's done when he's blown up in the past. So I mean, basically, he's permanently long, and then he keeps selling because it usually bounces, but he can't, you know, he runs out of bullets at some point. So everybody has limitations, and you really need to prepare yourself for when you get stressed to that point, you know, either reverse, get out. The, the first thing you can do is just get out. You don't have to, you don't yeah. have to. Stop, so the for, ble stop the bleeding. Stop the bleeding. And, 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 and probably since that time in February of 16 with oil, I haven't had a trade like that. I mean, this is the amazing thing. It's like I'm telling you this because I can remember it. So how often do yeah. I do that? Not that often because I, I'm more, I'm not a day trader, so I'm looking for bigger moves. But that moment for me was so, uh, it, it just because of my tenure of doing this, I could tell things, something had changed. Now, yeah. could I have been wrong? Yeah. And, and I also, you have to think through that, you know, where am I wrong on this, you know, mastermind right. type behavior? You don't just revert back to what you know. Correct. Correct. So you have to, again, just because you flip doesn't make you right at all. Right. I'm, I could totally be perceiving that wrong. So I don't do that a lot. A lot of people will say, oh, you know, I'm a day trader, so I'm going to flip one way or the other. They might do that a lot. I don't. But so it depends on the time frame you're trading, what you're trading, how you trade it. But absolutely. Plans, I would say most of the time my plan is 20% right. There you go. No, and I, and yeah. I say this all the time. 80% of my winning trades go against me at some point during the trade during the trade before I make money This is the hardest thing for people to Accept They're like, what do you mean? I'm like, I'm wrong Pretty much right away 80% of the time whether I'm long or short You have the emotional wherewithal to, I to accept it and I know that it's within my constraints of risk as long as it's there, then I exhale. If it's to my risk point, I'm out. I lost. Right? I the best thing I've been able to trick my brain is I'm wrong as soon as I like I expect the trade to be wrong. Like the maximum wrong. As also, soon as you click that button. As soon as I buy, I know it's gonna go against me. As soon as I sell, I know it's gonna go against me, and I know what my out is. I've accepted it. It's the only way I can trade. For me, that's a good strength. For me, it works yeah. because I know if it's ten thousand dollars, I'm going to lose. Even though I'm down two, I'm like, eh, it's not, it's not ten, so I'm okay. So I'm okay in the trade. Yeah. So that's the way that I set myself up for those situations, also. So it's a trick that I use. It's one that works for me. You may have a different one, but I think you have to find a way to get comfortable in the discomfort, which again yeah. is life. That's Life is about that discomfort. Quite, quite a bit. Yeah. I mean, I, and I don't mean that in a pessimistic, negative way, but guess what? In reality, life, yeah. life is up, life is down. There are peaks, there are valleys, and enjoy it all. Enjoy the good, enjoy the bad. Don't get too high, don't get too low. Those are key lessons, I think, about this podcast. So thanks for listening, everybody. We want to keep it short. And uh, One Minute Trader, if you have any questions, as always, send us. Uh, email matt at one minute trader TV. If you want to ask Tony, I'll send it to Tony. And uh, please, thanks for watching, listening, and we will talk to you soon. Have a great day, and we'll, we'll see you on the other side. Oh, also like us on iTunes, Stitcher, Podcasts, anywhere you listen to us. We appreciate it and uh, help us jump the rankings. Share with a friend. Share with a friend.